So what you'll, you'll get three minutes to chat about accessibility. And it's, it's also for you guys to get involved, but to get involved, you've got to take one of the chairs. There's always got to be one empty chair. Yeah, no, I'm putting it up. So if you want to come and join in, grab the empty chair that somebody else has to leave. Okay? So you get wait, three minutes. After the three minutes, you will vote if you want to continue talking about this subject. Okay? Right. So your three minutes starts now. He's going first. You go first. I'll go first because I'm the one that do this for a living. Talking about access. I don't do any access. I can't tell you how to make it accessible. I can't tell you anything about the computers. That's their job. <laughs> <laughs> I, uh, as a previous WordPress London, I piped up um, and kind of tried to explain the legal situation about accessibility for websites. And then everyone told me I was a complete bastard for apparently <laughs> shouting at someone, which I wasn't doing. But it's, it's quite important to know what the legal situation is this, is there is no real excuse for not having your website being accessible. Because the, lead, the law states you have to make reasonable adjustments. There is no reason that you can ever state my website is not accessible. It's not reasonable. So basically, you should be doing your, uh, your absolute utmost to be as accessible as you can. And so, you should be contacting people who are the experts in this and saying, how do I do it? If you don't know how to do it, make sure you get contact them because they will help. Because, tragically, the legal situation is this. If you don't make your client's website accessible, you're liable. They're liable in the first case but they can only sue for five grand. So I could sue a web a company that I've to and said, is your website accessible? No, it's not. I could sue for five grand. They could sue you for all of the damage to their name, to their image, to their public persona, and that could be a lot more. So it's got a financial reason for it, which means that you end up being stung much more than they do, even though they should have said to you in the first place, please make my site accessible. People don't do that because they expect nowadays things to be done for them. So if you get hired, people expect the site to be accessible. It does. It does, and it may impact on the way it looks. It may impact on design. I know I've had lots of conversations with people who went, oh, my mate, my mate, but my site's so pretty. It's not it's very pretty, pretty. But you've got to think, how can I make it pretty and accessible? And it can be done. And if you can't work working out, ask the experts. Because that's the thing about it. This is one of those communities where you can all work together and support each other. And it means that if you make WordPress accessible, the access leader, then what will happen is, is people will come to you. Because there are so many businesses out there at the moment that are screaming, how do we become accessible? And the answer is always, internet. You can't make your building accessible. It costs too much. Not reasonable. But it is reasonable to say, we can make that business online. And it's also legal. So they can say, well, you can't come in the shop, but you can get online and buy everything you want because you've made it all accessible. So what you've got is you've got the market desire to do that, but this market is desperate to find a way of becoming accessible the cheapest way possible, and that is always online. I can point there. So that's your three minutes. So now as a vote, do we want to continue this discussion? Not sure, or don't want to move on. <laughs> oh, we <laughs> oh, no, no, no. That's a thumbs up. So you've got another two minutes. Oh, okay. I think it's like Graham, uh, right, okay. probably. Okay, yeah, I can talk. Uh, now, some of you have been coming to WordPress London for a long time, and some of you are, are, are new members, and some of you have been coming just for a short time. Um, the people who have been here coming here for a long time know that I always bang on about this subject, and I've presented many presentations to WordPress London and WordCamps on this subject and Mick is, uh, has summed it up very eloquently in a situation which is about like the legal side of things and um, you know sort of kind of like it's touched on and, and I, liked, I like to present it in another way which is like it is the right thing to do. The internet is here for, for everybody really. It's one of the most democratic things that the world has. And it's, it's, a, it's a resource that everybody can use. People choose it to converse you know, with their friends, with their family, to get information about stuff, to do their financial transactions, to learn about things, right? 
and it's not rocket science to actually make stuff accessible. And to echo what Mick says, um, most designs um, can, you know, of, of websites can be made accessible if you know what you're doing. There's lots of tools out there. If you, you, one of the first steps is to just use the right HTML for what you're trying to do, uh, like headings, lists, etc., etc., etc. And then also there's st other stuff on the top of that. With um, especially when you've got JavaScript involved, things uh, there's a whole area, big wide open Alice in Wonderland area about ARIA, which is, it stands for Accessible Rich Internet Applications. And so this is where if you've got AJAX on your page, things update. You've got tab panels, you've got accordions, you've got modals that open, etc., etc., etc. There's a whole suite of patterns out there that people have worked out how to do all this stuff accessibly. So if you've got a Lightbox plugin, if you've got a, like a Carousel plugin, or if you're doing this, now the chances are if you just pick one off the shelf, it's not going to be accessible. But if you know what you're doing, you can either tweak one or build your own to actually make it accessible. And yes, I, I can see a bit of self-promotion here. That is what I do My, for a living. I, I do some WordPress stuff, but I actually help businesses make their websites accessible. That's what I do for a living. Can't you there. And other votes. Do you want to carry on? Not sure. We'll move on to another subject. Yeah! <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh. <laughs> We've got another two minutes from there. But it's a discussion, so any of you guys, if you want to get involved, yeah, come and have a seat. Uh, oh, can we just shout questions? Get in the seat. Go on. Yeah, go on. No, <laughs> <questions, laughs> get in the seat, ask yeah, questions. Yeah, I bet you're supposed to sit there. Do you want to take my seat or... Yeah, I'll take my seat. I'll take my seat. Oh, yeah, no, you'll stay. <laughs> Can I just say, it's not just disabled people, uh, this is a, I've just been to a massive conference about ageing in the community, yes. and every single Absolutely. thing applicable to the disabled is applicable to the old elderly, and trust me, that market is so... <laughs> Think your parents. Think your grandparents. So, um, what is the definition of a accessible site with minimum requirements? Is there any set in stone? Uh, no, there's nothing set in stone. There's a series of guidelines. Uh, the the WCAG 2 uh, guidelines, um, the World Wide Web Consortium produced these guidelines in about three or four or five years ago now. Um, and they're a good guide. This is what people uh, people tend to use when I do, when I do testing of websites. That's what people ask me to test against. The problem is that they were written five years ago, and of course, like uh, smartphones as we know them today, tablets as we know them today, didn't exist at all. So there's lots of gaps in that. So now it needs to be really for your website because everything's got to be mobile, responsive, and on and work on devices. And if anyone wants to. Sh when we go down the pub later, if anyone's got an iPhone, I can show them that there's a, a nice screen reader that's built into every single iPhone in this room, every single iPhone or not, iPad 2. And so it's all about, like, there's a whole extra series of things that you need to do um, to actually um, make it work on your t mobile devices. So there's no set in stone? No. Minimum um, requirement? Mm, no, there are, yeah, because there's so many different, the problem is it's not just about blind people, it's also about people with motor impairments, who can't use a mouse, uh, so they might use voice recognition software, or they might just use the keyboard. Uh, it's about people who are deaf. Or even dyslexics. Dyslexics, yeah. I mean, because like the bl actually blind people is quite a small, yeah. you know, actual number in the uh, in in the in populations around the world. Uh, there, yes, there are a lot of people with sight impairments, like people who can't see that well, who might want to make the text really big so they can see it. People who are color blind, much more, much out, you know vastly outnumbered blind people and dyslexics, people with cognitive impairments like people with autism, ADHD, etc, etc, etc. So it's a whole wide, you know, so you can't say, uh, you can't do this, this, this and this and this. You know, it's, a, it's actually quite a tricky one and I admit that's possibly that's why a lot of people don't try because it's like there's no clear goalpost because you're kicking at like 39 different goals and trying to get a ball in each one. That's, We'll do that. Yeah, that's <laughs> yeah, fine. That's what we said enough now. Okay. Oh, really good. Any, you want another vote? So we carry on? Not sure? Or move on to another subject? <laughs> another subject? Okay. Yeah. So the next one, stay there. Oh, what's yeah. <laughs> the next one? Juggling. Does the same thing. Hacks and attacks. 
Oh. So we're talking more secure. <laughs> now actually, I put this one up there. Oh, right. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm going to come and grab a seat. <laughs> oh, <Sweet>. Sort of like we, we've chosen one website at random and we're now going to have it. <laughs> Someone in this room. Uh, the, reason, the reason I put this up, because I've actually uh, hacked this week. I've been hacked. Oh, jeez. Oh, I ended up with this in my server. Now, quite often people don't tend to actually be quite open and talk about the fact that they've been hacked and there is a problem. But actually, I wanted to be open and I wanted to discuss it with you guys and just get feedback and see what you guys, if you've had issues or problems yourselves, have you, has your host solved it quickly? Have you solved it quickly? How have you dealt with your problems? I just wanted to check with you guys about it and see what you guys think. And if there's anybody out here that actually wants to get involved and talk about it's something like this. I, 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 I use I WordFix as a security software. Actually, it was security on one website and on the way here whilst I was on the train one of my client's sites, it was getting absolutely hammered, absolutely hammered. Well, I was getting like endless emails saying, you know, like loads, of, such and such a IP address is trying to log in, which is nonsense, you yeah. know. It was just a brute force attack. And it lasted for about 10 minutes and then it stopped because obviously they success, didn't work successful. Yeah. But, you know. This, I, mean, I think this came in via a plugin. I'm fairly certain I know where it came from. Um, but it's wasted nearly two days of my time trying to get to the bottom of it and get rid of what's gone on here. Um, and this is one of many files looking like this. So it was, a, it was it's been a great right. question here is how do we deal with plugins that may be installed out of our control that possibly are exploited or exploitable? But what does actually scan? Do you want to come down here? Come, come, come down here because I haven't got anything to say on this Please <laughs> 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 yes, I am now. And it's, 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 yes, yeah, they were they were actually involved in resolving this issue. There was uh, there were sixteen sites on this particular server, and this got into the groups, and it was affecting all sixteen sites that were on that particular server. Um, and I I tried myself. I. Dealt with, I spoke with my host as well, and my hosts were actually really good. What did um, that Sorry. What? Yeah, no, VPS. Okay. Um, and the hosts, as I say, they were very good, but it just kept returning, and we just couldn't get to the bottom of why it kept returning. And it turned out to be one line of code. code. Um, unfortunately, I haven't got it on here, but it, you wouldn't notice it. You just wouldn't expect it to be. Was it malicious or was it just yes. Yeah, it was malicious. It was, so it was sending was it? email from through the server, so it was just sending a spam. What plugin was it? Sorry. What plugin was it? Uh, I'd rather not say because I don't think it's fair. I need to speak. I, I am speaking with the developer. For, for mine, I had uh, a site recently. Uh, it was my own site, actually. And uh, it, the only symptom that I could see from it was that the, the root.hg access was getting wiped every three or four days. Um, so of course that, um, my, my, my root site was on permalinks. Um, so the home page would show up fine, but every other uh, page just was, uh, was coming up to the 404. So uh, I left it a while. I mean, for mine, I wasn't necessarily using this as first line marketing. So um, I wasn't too bothered that my own site was infected which is probably critical of myself. But then I, uh, I looked into it further as to why this was happening, and uh, yes, the site was totally infected, and uh, with my host, we managed to get rid of over a thousand files that were either infected or uh, malicious. Uh, most of them, I think 858 of them, were exactly the same file that had been um, implanted into the site. And it turned out that this particular site, uh, this particular file, was based on taking post data um, and um, base 64 decoding it, which I just saw up there somewhere, there. and then uh, basically eval in it, which may not be down bottom, which you can't see. Which can't is down there somewhere, you eval it with a PHP. So basically, they were sending a post request to my site to a particular file and then running that PHP. And of course, I've got <coughs> and everything that. So um, we've got rid of all those files and we have uh, I've checked the database, nothing there. And hopefully now everything is sorted and the HG access hasn't been wiped. But one of the things with being wiped every kind of three or four days is that I can see when these new files are created with the 
random file name in four or five um, random characters each, um, also a kind of really nice timestamp of when these attacks were happening. Um, and because I've left it so long, it's just built up to uh, over a thousand files, quite literally, of each of files. So, pause there. Do you want to carry on? Not sure, move on. Carry on? Yeah, we actually only got two minutes left anyway. <laughs> so, so, the way I've kind of, uh, kind of attacked it now is to uh, install the security on the root site and the six or seven, um, it's kind of sub, uh, pub, pub, the sub sites on there as well. Um, and as of now, nothing has been reinfected. The HD access, the root of the HD access is still there, so I'm always on the presumption that nothing has been infected from it. And um, using the security, the hardening plugin, it does hardening and all sorts of things. I've kind of checked everything off and, and done all that. So far, nothing has come through. So, so do you think is that good practice? The, the, yeah. The, the, well, yeah, I think it's a, definitely a good practice. I think iThemes has also got a, um, uh, an aspect of it that will check. It knows what the root file should be for a particular WordPress version or what should right. be there. Um, so even like the, the PHP underscore error log file shows up as a potentially hey, I don't know what this file is. You need to say yes, that's fine or not. So even that it picks up on. Um, and then if there's any of these random files being generated, obviously that will show up there as well. So better now than later. This, this file, error.php, you wouldn't really expect yeah. that. It's, it's, um, it's not a known file. Sorry, for a non-developer, where would you see, where would the file be? I found this at the root. So it was a next to Okay. They, they were actually dotted throughout right. multiple installations. Um, oh, okay. So one of the things that given the so one of the things that what the symptoms. Uh, it actually, the host picked up on the fact that mail was being sent from the server. Uh, one of the things that I, that I, because I had a client site hacked in the autumn last year, uh, and it, it securely dealt with it and everything like that. But o, o, over the time, I then put some more plugins on to see what was going on. There's one WP audit or something like that, which notices changes with files and just like. And I noticed that just before Christmas, that a whole load of new files started appearing. And in the end, it, we, we tracked it down. It was basically, it was the FTP. Someone had got hold of the FTP details, right? So oh. when. Well, it was for a client. Whether or not the someone, you know, if they broke it into the email account of the client, of my client, because obviously I hadn't divulged them to anyone. But um, as soon as I changed the FTP password, it just stopped. You know, it, we managed to get that changed. And so the part that it comes down to security of your passwords is, is a key thing here as well, because that appears to be the chink that people got in through. When I, I first, so I was first made aware of this by the host um, email account, but actually I also noticed some unusual users being generated on the site. Um, I realised over a couple of days they were all Yahoo.com for every single email address. And it was it just, the users looked quite genuine, the way they were greeted, but actually they were part of this. Are there, are there monitoring tools that a, a non-techie could use to be able to Recover from this one. Yeah, well, okay. very much the, uh, the iTunes. Yeah, we got that on well. yeah. I, I, I didn't mention that one. The one, uh, one I use is WordFence, but it's uh, yeah, uh, security. I can't remember what it's called, but it's just yeah. security for any plugins. Yeah. That was sharp. And also the iThemes. Um, there's a they've got a security related plugin as well. Um, yeah. uh, word, WordFence is only good, but they're, they're all slightly different. But very advisable to the yeah. But I, I think less part of the lesson learned for me was hosting and making sure that you've got a good host or something that you know is going to be also on the ball, ball basically. Making sure that this kind of thing isn't going to carry on. Yeah. If anyone is actually looking after a server, maybe they don't have that control over the sites where you can say, you know, you should have this word fence installed, you may not be able to do that. You may not be able to control what usernames people use. Um, then one thing that we've been using is something called fail to ban which basically runs on the server <coughs> monitors the log files for well how we set up is failed login attempts it will get the password wrong and basically it will block them at, a, at the server firewall level completely from the entire server 
for a user configurable time, say an hour or so. And um, that also reduces the sort of performance hit that you get with all these automated attacks. Uh, if, you, if you are using a WordPress plugin, that is still having to be processed in PHP, which is a, you know, is a performance hit. You know, you're to do without that. It does seem slightly ironic as well, putting a plugin to secure the site, but actually that plugin could become vulnerable itself. Yeah. So there's, there's there are pros and cons. I, I, I tried um, a security plugin I'm using um, OpenShift, and OpenShift changes some of the WordPress files itself, so um, that was a bit confusing for me. I couldn't work out whether these were problems with I mean, I didn't have a problem with the site as far as I was aware, but it did flag up that there were all these changes, which I assumed were things that changed the relationship that actually made to the... You know, because it, it was one of these security things that checked the, 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 the WordPress files against what they should have been. Okay. And it was finding that there were these differences, uh, which I attributed to the But they didn't come across that sort of thing. I personally haven't. Actually, I'm afraid we're out of time. <laughs> 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 Thank you for everybody who's participated in this.